Well, hello there. Um, we are here in, in the heart of Union Square, and uh, I'm here with these lovely ladies, and we're going to be talking to you today about Somerville Open Studios and the fantastic artists that are going to be featured there, some of which are, are in uh, Davis Square in the Inside Out Gallery. Um, but before we do that, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Heather. I'm with the Somerville Arts Council, and, and to my right, I'm Nancy. I am volunteering with, with SOS or Somerville Open Studios. And Johanna Finnegan Toppitzer, also a volunteer with Somerville Open Studios. Okay. And um, the Inside Out Gallery, for those of you who don't know, is a, is a gallery that's actually in the CBS building in Davis Square. And uh, it was initiated in 2009. Uh, with the help of the owner of the building. And from then on, uh, I curate and manage the window. And with that, I feature artists that are in Somerville and also local organizations. And uh, each year for the past uh, few years or so, um, in April, we, we have featured Somerville Open Studios artists. And this year, uh, both Nancy and, uh, and Johanna have, um, have very generously donated their time in curating this year's exhibit, and they're going to tell you a little bit more about it. <laughs> um, well, the theme that SOS had come up with for this year, it, each year there's a different theme for SOS, and the theme is greetings from, is greetings from Somerville. And so um, we had decided um, that we'd stick with that theme for the window, or for the artwork. But when the call went out, so um, we got some really great, very good submissions, and it was pretty hard to um, to choose. But um, we fortunately we were very fortunate to get enough submissions around that theme that we could focus on just the whole Somerville greetings kind of. Kind of thing. And Nancy did a lot of work with the uh, behind the the uh, artwork itself, where you might go down there and see some uh, large scale postcards. Um, to make it look like we have a bunch of packaging in the window to make it look like uh, people would be sending their art from Somerville after they uh, buy some wonderful pieces at the Somerville Open Studios on the last weekend in April. It was a fun theme to work with because um, in going with the whole, in the, with the postcard theme brought in the whole postal theme which, which allowed us to incorporate some of Hillary Scott's old um, packaging that he had produced for a show a few years ago, which were amazing. But um, it allowed us to kind of play with that theme of um, come to coming to open studios, but being able to, you know, the art is so great, but look, I can, I want to send some to my friends. And, you know, um, we were playing with, with stamps, like fragile artwork inside, so, and the whole postcard background theme. So it was a fun theme to work with. Um, some twine and, wrapping up packages to send artwork or invite your friends. So it was, it was, it looks great. great. Yeah. But enough about us. Let's hear from the artists. My name's Stan Eichner. I live in East Somerville. I've been in Somerville for 35 plus years, I think. Um, it's the last five years is when I've been a participant in open studios. In the last two to three years, I've also been a member of the board. So um, I love taking pictures of Somerville. It's just so interesting visually. Uh, the picture that I entered that got accepted, it's three houses on Medford Street. And it was a, a white, blue, and a white house just all lined up with dramatic clouds. And I actually was coming home from a, a festival here in, in Union Square. So it's just a perfect day to capture what's beautiful about Somerville. You know, my day job is a civil rights lawyer, and it's only relatively recently that I've tried to take myself a little more seriously as an artist. And that's one of the things about Open Studios, that it allowed me a way to sort of tentatively show myself. And I was shocked when the first year people actually showed up and bought things. And so it's just been an evolution. SOS has played a really major role in even being able to say the word artist next to my name and taking myself a little more seriously. Well, well SOS 
I would really commend that organization. They do so much with a very small amount of staff. You know, it's, it's just a major volunteer effort. And uh, because my house isn't accessible to people with disabilities, uh, being able to show at the community space at the armory was really key. And so it gave me a place where for not an outrageous amount of money I could try, gee, maybe I'll show my stuff. And it really gave me a way to sort of show myself more and more as an artist and even think of myself as an artist. And the Arts Council, I can't say too many great things because my daughter is on staff, so the conflict of interest. But more seriously, the Arts Council does amazing stuff. I was just at their summit yesterday. Uh, they support and invigorate art throughout the city. One word. I'm going to do combined, vibrant, and diverse. So I'm just one of almost 400 artists that will be showing the weekend of April 30th and May 1st uh, to look at uh, the work of all the artists and where to go. Check out our website, www.somervilleopenstudios.org. Uh, it's a great website, and you can find sample work of everyone and where they are. Check us out. I've been living and working in Somerville for eight years and I've always gone to Somerville Open Studios and I really like visiting people's home studios but I also really like going to the Vernon Street Studios and going to the Armory um, and so this year I'm thrilled to be a part of it. So I paint on reclaimed materials and I feel like in that way each piece that I paint on had a story before it came to me which for me feels a lot like Somerville. That Somerville is this community made up of all of these really different parts. Families who've been here for generations and generations. People who move here for school and fall in love with the place and never leave. Um, which is kind of my story. Um, but then there's also people who move to the community based on its reputation, either past reputation or present reputation. Um, and Somerville just kind of becomes this, you know, this something new of old stories and new stories all mixed together. So I feel like my work really fits into that narrative. Um, the pieces that I paint on all are come from the New England area. The windows all come out of houses, I think they're all from Massachusetts and the cedar shingles all come off of houses on the Cape, so it's all local. I've been a painter for pretty much as long as I can remember. I was an art major in undergrad. I've always taken art classes. Um, I always loved art in school, in elementary school, and high school was always my favorite. Um, I didn't actually get serious about painting regularly, and especially not about showing my work until the last couple of years. And so I'm excited to finally be doing it now. I, for as long as I can remember, have played with my food and not in the like playing it with, the, with it with my fingers sense, but in experimenting with textures. And so, and I still do this where I'll play, see what kind of impressions I can make with my fork in my mashed potatoes, that kind of stuff. And that's also how I paint. So I paint with a palette knife and I, really am interested in texture and so layering paint really really thick. Um, I work in an art museum where obviously I'm not allowed to touch anything but I think that's also part of the reason that I paint with increasingly amount, increasingly large amounts of texture because um, I can touch my own work and I can't touch anybody else's. Um, and I also in terms of the reclaimed materials that I paint on I really like this idea of layering, just like layering paint, you know, layering stories, the story of the object before it came to me, the story that I'm adding on to it. Um, the first cedar shingle that I ever painted on, I found in the grass out on the Cape, and I remember picking it up and being like, what is this? And then going, I could paint on that. And now I have this huge collection of, I could paint on this, that is slowly taking over my apartment. I feel like Somerville has this incredibly vibrant arts community and the Somerville Arts Council really shows how supportive Somerville is of the arts community with the workshops that they offer and the opportunities for the artists to get to know each other, the opportunities for the community to get to know the artists work and I'm just really thrilled to be able to be a part of it this year. I would describe Somerville as eclectic.
my name is Emily. I um, am an artist working here in Somerville. I've been working full time as an artist for the last three or four years at this point. Um, and I have a studio space at Artisans Asylum right nearby. I, so I um, moved to Somerville basically to participate in Somerville Open Studios. I specifically didn't want to live in Cambridge. I want to live in Somerville and that was in 2009. Um, and so I've participated in SOS since then. Um, I started in, uh, in my first year was 2010. So let's see, I participated at the community space for three years and then I have participated in my space at uh, Artisans Asylum for the next I have two pieces in this uh, installation that's on the theme of Wish You Were Here. And um, they, all of my drawings, I do drawings of kind of maps that I make up as I draw. So they're all map like, they're all have some sort of element of geographic themes, um, networks, groups of people, that kind of that kind of thing. Maybe some of them are more abstract, some of them are more literal. The ones that they chose are more um, lo look more like vignettes. You can think that they might be a real place, but um, they are all made up as I draw. So basically, any of my drawings would be a place that I, you know, might wish to be, or that someone might wish you were there. So um, that's how it fits in with the theme. So I've been working as an artist. I've been making and selling art since I moved to Somerville, so since fall 2009, after I graduated from undergrad. And then um, I've been doing this full as my full-time gig for the last, again, three or four years. And my process has changed a little bit over time. Um, when I started drawing these maps that I've been drawing as part of my senior show when I was graduating, um, they were black and white, they were ink and pen, um, and they were very vignette-y, they had a lot of space, they were more like you could imagine um, an aerial view actually looking like, you know, although they were kind of abstracted. And as I drew them, I realized that what I was really interested in is sort of the networks and how they connect to other types of networks. So, you know, how come people look at my maps and say, wow, you know, those look like blood vessels, or those look kind of like cells or something like that. So I've been trying to hone in on that and I've been trying to think about, well, what does unite these different things? You know, what kind of concepts unite them? What kind of processes unite them? Um, and what can I do to replicate something that gets in touch with that as well? And so I've been doing more with kind of randomness lately, more with um, processes that are out of my control um, in order to replicate that kind of uh, chaos that forms those kinds of shapes as well in nature. So. Somerville, Somerville Open Studios and the Somerville Arts Council are different entities. <laughs> I, I've gotten involved with Somerville Open Studios since I moved here and so when I, the year I started uh, participating I also started volunteering and I was helping to just dis distribute map books and simple stuff like that then uh, a couple years later I was coordinating poster distribution and then the next year I was coordinating and so um, and now I'm on the board for some Open studios so I really found them to just for me personally they've benefited my practice by um, providing me with an amazing network um, I wouldn't know you know any of the people that I know in Somerville right now. I think if it wasn't for that kind of getting involved, volunteering, spending some of my time, um, you know, with this other group of people who share interests with me. So for me personally, it's, that's done a lot. Um, for me personally, Somerville Arts Council, I got a um, LCC grant from them actually that I fulfilled last summer with a community map making project. And so that you know, directly benefited my art practice, but it also just the existence of Somerville Arts Council and the way that they run. Um, I really actually value them in terms of the culture of Somerville's creative community because we, I've always felt like Somerville has, is in this really great sweet spot where there's enough people, there's enough creative people to have sort of a critical mass, but we're small enough that we can do, we can have the leeway to do interesting projects without the enormous amount of bureaucracy. So you don't feel like you 
are hindered. If you have a cool idea, they, they literally have calls out for producers, they have calls out for interesting ideas, um, and they're very, they're always, I always find them to be surprisingly amenable. Um, surprisingly interested in that, you know, you don't you get don't get the feeling that you're gonna immediately be shot down if you have an interesting idea or an out there idea. Um, I'm looking <laughs> out the Scat TV windows. Uh, my friend Judith's uh, micro museum project or tiny museum project is in the wall uh, between the independent and the subway sandwich shop, um, and she did that through Somerville Arts Council. So it's like the world's tiniest museum. It's made in a fishbowl and it's inset in the wall. Uh, so it, I don't believe that it currently has an exhibition, but it was rotating for a little while, and uh, and they went all in. I mean, they they you know helped her helped her get this off the ground, and you know the mayor got involved. There was an amazing little uh, there was a ribbon cutting ceremony for the tiniest museum, and he came and and gave a very short speech, and you know, <laughs> there was just it was. Um, that kind of idea, you know, you have an idea like that, and you can feel supported in uh, in trying to get it to fruition. So. Um, I guess I've been working as an artist. In 1999, when I began playing with photography, my grandfather was a commercial artist, so I grew up around art. My process right now is I usually find a piece of paper, a panel, and I dress it, or I dress it with a blank page, and I begin sketching usually the figure with pencil, and then um, my artwork deals with the human body and the difficult I have with my disability, so my figures are very organic. And then I'll take a sharpie and go over the pencil with a sharpie so I can't erase my shaky line. And then I'll paint it in or color it in and I listen to music while I create because that's very important to me too and that's a quick synopsis. I began getting involved in so at some of the open studios in 2010. Um, and then every year I kind of got more involved doing the volunteer show at Block 11. And I'm now on the board of some of the open studios. For me, it makes me feel connected to artists in Somerville, and it allows me to explore the community more and be like, okay, it's really like the town and city I want to be in. Um, now for the Arts Council, I wasn't so involved until I applied for the Fritz Box Grant 
Én erdő a Balcsúcsú Bartfőztár ümpény. Um, én egyfőli tartogrant, és volt able to take my art practice out of the studio and, and to more of the public eye and it forced me to change my media too because you have to use oil paint but are you pastel but it just helped me branch out and reach out to the arts council. You know what, it was really great to hear from uh, the artists today and it was wonderful that they were able to participate. But Stan, we had uh, Christina, Emily, and Jamie. And there's also a lot of other great artists that are also featured in the window. And uh, I was wondering if you might be able to just tell us uh, about your process in choosing uh, those artists as well. Yeah, we had a lot of really great submissions. In fact, we had a lot of even great submissions a number of them from each artist. For example, Julie Angela Teresa had submitted um, several paintings which were just great, but one of them was the wrapped. It looked, it was like a package that was wrapped with twine and ready to go, and so that fit perfectly with the theme. Um, Pauline Lim does this great mosaic work. Um, she creates these pictures in a, in a, a mosaic style and a couple of, the, of her submissions were of houses and you know that went really great with like Stan's photos and some and Rachel Mello's um, house and there was this whole house theme going on which of course fits in really great with the whole Somerville gentrification and affordable housing and in fact on one of Pauline's you know it was titled Let Me In um, and uh, let's see, um, Jennifer, Jim, yep, Jim had a nice, uh, he, oh, he had a Prospect Hill, which of course, I mean, what's more Somerville than Prospect Hill <laughs> under a blue sky, right? Um, and a couple of others, which, yes, this is of Somerville people. Jennifer Park submitted, um, um, Oh, it was a wonderful, it was, a, it, was, it was that wonderful beach that you're, it kind of like took you back into a whole nother spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we had a nice, nice, we, we, we were looking for a diversity. We were, we were a little bit disappointed that we didn't get any 3D work, but, but what we did get gave us so much to work with. So that was great. But enough about us. But enough about us. <laughs> I think, you know, and again, it is, it is, it is, it is about the Somerville artists, and there's, there's probably is it like 400 artists that are participating this year or so? Not quite, not quite this year, but upwards of that. Of oh, course. So, so it really is about not just uh, about the artists that are in the main buildings, like, um, like Brick Bottom. Joy Street, Mad Oyster, Vernon Street, but it is about the artists that are in the home studios. Yeah. Then homes are a nice feature por uh, part in this year's exhibit. So it's it's not just about the individuals, it's about the collective of artists sharing their artwork. And we hope that you are able to go visit Davis Square and see the Inside Out Gallery of all the great submissions that we have for this year. And uh, it's gonna be up all the way through Open Studios and each of the artists that's featured um, also has their map number and their contact information so you can see more of their work in the studios where they, where they create their fabulous art. And uh, to find out more about Open Studios, you go to openstudios.org and uh, you can find a list of all the artists that are participating this year, or you can also get a map, and the map is also is, is going to be on the, on the really kind of funky map stands that you'll see throughout the city. So thank you very much. Again, my name is Heather. Nancy. Johanna. And a big shout out to SCAT TV for allowing us to be able to do this. Thank you very much.